So a very good morning to all of you. And I'm back with a series of operating system lectures here. This is our lecture number 20. And today's uh, lecture is going to be very, you know, interesting topic as we are going to see what exactly is the concept of page replacement and the algorithms which are related to page, uh, page replacement, which our operating system uses whenever there is uh, you know, a need of page replacement. So we are going to see uh, some of the very, very important algorithms. We are going to see the merits and the demerits related to those algorithms. So stay tuned with me and keep on So here is page replacement that you can see. This is our lecture number 20. And I hope uh, the presentation PPT slides are visible to all of you. You can see all of the slides here. Now let us begin with the lecture. First of all, the objectives of today's lecture will be to understand that why do we need to have replacement of pages? Then what is the basic page replacement technique? And then different types of page replacement algorithms, their examples, uh, the demerits and the merits that we have. And together with all of these, our today's lecture is not limited to all on these uh, you know, three points, but we'll have uh, more than that in part. Okay, so let us move on. Talking about page replacement algorithms, first of all, uh, you see, we need to uh, understand that why an operating system need to have page replacement, right? Why do we have page replacements in operating system? So when we talk about page replacement, So, see, in any computer uh, operating system that produces paging concept, paging concept we have already seen, paging is a non contiguous allocation of memory in operating system, right? Where what do we do? We divide uh, both the memories, like the primary memory and the secondary memory, into some equal partitions, and we call them pages in secondary memory and we call them frames in main memory, right? So what do we do in a computer operating system which use paging for the virtual memory management, page replacement algorithms are the ones which decide that which memory pages, uh, you know, to page out. Sometimes, which is, uh, what do we call? Swap out, right? Or we are right to this or when a page of memory needs to be allocated. So page replacement basically happens when a requested page is not in the memory and what is this condition see i told you this condition when i was uh, you know uh, explaining you the concept of paging whenever you want to load or when you want to uh, you know execute some process we have already seen that what do we do we divide the process into uh, some partitions and in and those partitions are basically stored in a particular page so obviously when you are executing a process one by one all the uh, parts of the process which are stored in various pages they will be executed so one by one all the pages will be called so let us assume that you are requesting one page to be loaded in the memory to get executed and that page is missing in the memory it is not there in the secondary memory so what do we call that condition it is called the page fault so you know this is the point where page replacement is required so page replacement always occur when you are requesting a page and that page is not in the in the memory it is creating a page fault and a free page cannot be used to satisfy the allocation even this is a problem you cannot satisfy it, this condition with a free page so either uh, why this condition has occurred because uh, there are none of the pages which you have requested or because the number of free pages is lower than some threshold value so you know when the page that was selected for replacement and uh, you know paged out is referenced again it has to be paged in it has to be read from the disk and this actually involves you know waiting for input output completion so this determines the quality of the page replacement algorithm the less time waiting for pages the better the algorithm 
So a page replacement algorithm looks at actually uh, at the limited information about accesses to the pages provided by the hardware. And it tries to guess which page should be replaced to minimize the total number of page misses while balancing this with the cost like uh, primary storage and processor time all of these things should be you know, considered of the algorithm itself right so the page replacing problem is you know it is a typically uh, online problem from the competitive analysis perspective in the sense that the optimal deterministic algorithm is already known now just have a look at the quick history of the page replacement and then we'll be moving on with the further process now see the page replacement algorithms were a hot topic of research and debate in 60s and 70s now that mostly ended with the development of sophisticated lru least recently used approximations and working set algorithms. Since then, some basic assumptions made by the traditional page replacement algorithms were invalidated, resulting in a revival of research. In particular, the following trends in the behavior of the underlying hardware and user level software have affected the performance of page replacement algorithms. Now, what are the, you know, the trends that affected? The first trend that was, uh, you know, at that time prevailing was the size of primary storage, which has increased by multiple orders of magnitude. With several gigabytes of primary memory, algorithms that require a periodic check of each and every memory frame are becoming less and less practical. Memory hierarchies have grown taller. The cost of a CPU cache miss is far more expensive. Now, this exacerbates the previous problem. Locality of reference of user software has weakened. This is mostly attributed to the spread of object-oriented programming techniques that favor large numbers of small functions, use of sophisticated data structures like trees and hash tables that tend to result in chaotic memory reference patterns and the advent of garbage collection that drastically changed memory access behavior of applications. Now, requirements for page replacement algorithms have changed due to differences in operating system kernel architecture. In particular, most modern operating system kernels have unified virtual memory and file system caches. Requiring the page replacement algorithm to select a page from among the pages of both user program virtual address spaces and cached files. The letter pages have specific properties. For example, they can be locked or can have right ordering requirements imposed by journaling. Moreover, as the goal of page replacement is to minimize total time waiting for memory, it has to take into account memory requirements imposed by other kernel subsystems that allocate memory. As a result, page replacement in modern kernels like Linux, FreeBSD, and Solaris, it tends to work at the level of a general purpose kernel memory allocator rather than at the higher level of a virtual memory subsystem. Now let us see what is basic page replacement we have seen. First of all, we need to find the location of the desired page on the disk. Whatever page you want to execute, you need to search out for that particular location that where exactly is your page in that location or in that memory. Then we need to find a free frame. Obviously, you are looking for a page in the secondary memory. And as I have already told you very many times that whenever you want to execute a process, you would have to load it back into the main memory. That means in main memory, what do we do? We partition it and call it frame. So what do we need to do is we need to load the uh, pages inside the frame. So here what we have to do is we need to find a free frame to load our desired page. So if there is a free frame, we can use it. Then there could be a condition that we don't find any free frame. So at that particular condition, what do we need to do is we need to use 
use page replacement algorithm to select a victim page. Right, uh, we need to select a frame where you know we can see like uh, if it is not in use, how we can replace it with the upcoming page. So we need to write the victim frame to the disk. We need to take it back to the secondary memory. One of the frame has to be chosen to take it back to the secondary memory to put it in the uh, disk and then we can load the new page. So we'll write the victim frame to the disk, we'll change the frame and then page tables accord. Then we'll read the desired page. Once we have you know, taken the victim page inside the uh, disk memory, what do we do? We'll read the desired page into the newly freed frame and we'll change the page and frame tables accordingly because uh, as I've told you that you know every frame and every page has their entries in the page tables of the frame or uh, the frame tables. So even that needs to be updated. Whatever you are doing with the pages, whatever you are doing with the frames, always do remember that operating system keeps account of each and everything. Whatever, if you are swapping in or swapping out some pages or the frames, they all have their accountability in those tables. So you have to do these things. And then finally, when you have you know uploaded your uh, desired page into the new frame, you have to restart the user process. So here, uh, students, I think you people are able to see this diagram. Are you able to see all the diagrams here? Right. So just see what is happening here. Here you can see uh, the page table. This is a physical memory that we can see. That means the main memory. And this is your secondary memory. Assume this, this circular oval shape or cylindrical shape structure as your secondary memory. And this rectangular shape is considered to be your physical memory. So here what we are doing is, uh, let us say if I need to you know, um, execute some process uh, who's, which is partitioned into some pages and it is stored in the secondary memory, I need a desired page to be kept inside this, right? To be kept in the physical memory. Now let us assume that I didn't find any free frame in the this uh, physical memory. So what I'll do is I'll find a victim page, a page that can be replaced so that my new or desired page can be executed first. So what I'll do is I'll find a victim page. I'll swap out. Swap out means I'll load. I'll move this page or this frame from the physical memory to this disk memory, right? And what I'll do the next part is I'll change it to invalid bit. Here the frame has valid and invalid bit. So I'll change this invalid bit. And then at the third part, what I'll do is I'll swap the desired page inside this uh, you know, freed up space. And then finally, I'll reset the page table for new page. Now I'll have to mark that a new page has come inside and I'll have to update my page table with a frame number and the valid bit point, right? And then finally, I can execute it. So this is how the page replacement is working. You can see all these things here. Just, just have a look at this first. So I hope this is clear to all of you. Let's move forward. Now, the question comes, how do we detect which pages are referenced and modified? Okay. Now for this, at, understand this thing that Water general purpose computers and some uh, you know embedded processors have a support for virtual memory. Each process has its own virtual address space. A page table maps a subset of the process virtual address to the physical address. In addition, in most of the architectures, the page table holds an access bit and a dirty bit for each page in the page table. The CPU sets the access bit when the process reads on writes memory in that page. The CPU sets the dirty bit when the process writes memory in that page. The operating system can modify the access and the dirty bits. 
the operating system can detect accesses to memory and files through the following means. By what means? First, by clearing the access bit in the pages present in the processes page table. After some time, the operating system scans the page table, looking for pages that had the access bit set by the CPU. This is fast because the access bit is set automatically by the CPU and inaccurate because the operating system does not immediately receive notice of the access, nor does it have information about the order in which the process accesses these pages. By removing pages from the process page table without necessarily removing them from the physical memory, the next access to that page is detected immediately because it causes a page fault. So this is a slow process because a page fault involves a context switch to the operating system. Software lookup for the corresponding physical address, modification of the page table and a context switch back to the process and accurate because the access is detected immediately after it happens. So directly when the process makes system calls that potentially access the page cache like read and write in process. So before that, you know, uh, before doing this, uh, we have we should have a pre-cleaning session. So what is pre-cleaning here? See, most replacement algorithms simply return the target page as their result. This means that if the target page is dirty, that is, it contains data that have to be returned to the stable storage before a page can be reclaimed. So input output has to be initiated to send that page to the stable storage or to clean the page. Now in the early days of virtual memory, time spent on cleaning was not of much concern because virtual memory was first implemented on systems with full duplex channels to the stable storage and cleaning was customarily overlapped with page. Contemporary commodity hardware, on the other hand, it does not support full duplex transfers and cleaning of target pages becomes an issue. So to deal with this situation, various pre-cleaning policies are implemented. Pre-cleaning is a mechanism that starts input output on dirty pages that are likely to be replaced soon. So the idea is that by the time the pre-cleaned pages is actually selected for the replacement, the input output will complete and the pages will be clean. So pre-cleaning assumes that it is possible to identify pages that will be replaced next. Pre-cleaning that is too eager can waste input output bandwidth by writing pages that manage to get redirected before being selected for replacement. So now first we'll understand what is local versus global replacement? See, replacement algorithms can be local or they can be global in nature. Okay. Now, when a process incurs a page fault, a local page replacement algorithm selects for replacement of uh, you know some pages that belongs to that same process or a group of process sharing a memory partition. So, a global replacement algorithm is free to select any page in the memory. Local page replacement assumes some form of memory partitioning that determines how many pages are to be assigned to a given process or a group of processes. Now, most popular forms of partitioning are called the fixed partitioning, as we have already seen, and the balance set algorithms based on the working set model. So the advantage of local page replacement is its scalability where each process can handle its page faults independently, leading to more consistent performance for that process. However, global page replacement is more efficient on an overall system bias. So we have seen this dirty page and So the policy of replacement is that which page is to be replaced as we have seen the victim page is always you know replaced with the page but whom to select. Now second is that page removed should be the page 
least likely to be referenced in the near future. And most policies predict the future behavior on the basis of past behavior. This is what page faults versus number of frames look like. First of all, before going into the, you know, um, the exact algorithms that are used for page replacement, let us just see the, quickly the solutions that are proposed for this uh, replacement strategy. So one thing here is called anticipatory paging. What is anticipatory paging? See, some systems, are, you know, they use demand paging. We have seen the concept of demand paging uh, while I was teaching you the non-contiguous allocation of memory. So here, waiting until a page is actually requested before loading it into the RAM. What is demand paging? You are waiting until a page is actually requested before loading it into the RAM. Now, other systems attempts to reduce latency by guessing which pages not in RAM are likely to be needed soon. And preloading such pages into RAM before that page is requested. So this is often in combination with pre-cleaning, which guesses which pages currently in RAM are not likely to be needed soon, and pre-writing them out to storage. So when a page fault occurs, anticipatory paging, uh, you know, systems will not only bring in the reference page, but also the next few consecutive pages, which are analogous to a prefetch input queue in a CPU. So the swap prefetch mechanism goes even further in loading pages, even if they are not consecutive, that are likely to be needed soon. So here is one problem, which is called the HK paging problem. The HK paging problem is just a generalization of the model of paging problem, where let H and K be positive integers such that H is less than or equals to K. V Measure the performance of an algorithm with a cache of size h less than equals to k relative to the theoretically optimal page replacement algorithm. If h is less than k, we provide the optimal page replacement algorithm, which is strictly you know less resource. So the HK paging problem is a way to measure how an online algorithm performs by comparing it with the performance of the optimal algorithm specifically separately parameterizing the cache size of the online algorithm and optimal algorithm. And we have some marking algorithms. Here, marking algorithms is a general class of paging algorithms. For each page, we associate it with a bit called its mark. Initially, we set all the pages as unmarked. Now, during a stage of page request, we mark a page when it is first requested in this stage. A marking algorithm in, uh, you know, is such an algorithm that never pages out a marked page. Now, if algorithm is a marking algorithm with a cache of size k, and OPT is the optimal algorithm which are with a cache of size h, where h is less than or equal to k, then the algorithm is k divided by k minus h plus 1 is competent. So even marking algorithm attains the k divided by k minus h plus 1 minus competitive ratio. So LRU is marking algorithm while FIFO is not a marking algorithm. I'm going to cover up this also. And then finally we have another category of algorithms which are called conservative algorithms. So an algorithm is conservative if on any consecutive request sequence containing k or fewer distinct page references, the algorithm will incur k or few page faults. If the algorithm is a conservative algorithm with a cache of size k and OPT is the optimal algorithm with a cache of h less than equals to k, then the algorithm is k divided by k minus h plus 1 minus competitor. So every conservative algorithm attains the k divided by k minus h plus 1 minus competitive ratio. 
So here, LRU, FIFO, and CLOCK are conservative algorithms, right? So I hope this one is clear to you that how many categories of algorithms we have. Now we'll quickly move on to the replacement algorithms part. So these are the categories we have: the FIFO page replacement algorithm. Then we have optimal page replacement. Then the third one is called the LRU page replacement. Next one is called LRU approximation page replacement. And then we have counting based page replacement. So now we are going to understand the FIFO page replacement first. Now, when we talk about the four page replacement algorithm, understand that you know it is a very simple way of page replacement and it is referred to as first in, first out. So, this algorithm mainly replaces the oldest page that has been present in the main memory for the longest time, right? Now, this algorithm is basically implemented by keeping the track of all the pages in the queue. As new pages are requested and are swapped in, they are added to the tail of a queue and the page which is at the head becomes the victim page to be replaced, right? Now, this is actually not an effective way of page replacement, but it can be used for, you know, small systems we can use them. So, what are the advantages here? This algorithm actually, you know, it is best suited for the simplicity. If you want a very simple algorithm and very easy implementation, you can use this uh, algorithm. And secondly, it does not cause more overhead. Then the disadvantage of this algorithm seems that, you know, it this algorithm does not make the use of frequency of last use time. Rather than, it, you know, it just replaces the oldest page. So there is an increase in page faults as page fame increases. The performance of this algorithm as such is worst in nature you know, on the basis of the efficiency. So we have seen this. As you can see here, these are the problems that you know, the, page, uh, the FIFO algorithm faces. It ignores the locality of rest preferences well. A page which was referenced last may also get replaced, although there is you know high probability that the same page may be needed again. First of all, 7 is added to the queue. You can see the queue here. This is the front end of the queue. And this is the rear end, which is empty right now. Again, we need to enter 0. Let's say I am entering 0. So 0 will be entered over here. Right? Again, 1 I want to enter. So 1 will be entered over here. Then, now let's say I want to add 2 to this queue. So how can I uh, add 2 to this queue? As the people suggest, we need to, you know, uh, remove the front element, the front value or the front page from the queue. So here the front page was 7. So I'm going to replace this 7 with 2 values. So all the rest values will be same. Only 2 will be replaced with 7 here. You can see. Now again, I want to, you know, have 0. I want to uh, have a 0 value here. So what will happen here? See. 2, 3, 1. Here 2 and then 0 will be replaced and here I am getting 3, 3 and 1. Then again I want to have 0. So again for 0 I will be replacing it here. 
Then I want 4. I will be replacing it again to 4 here. Then I want 2. Instead of 3, I will replace 2. Then again it is 3. So instead of 0, I will replace 3. Then again 0. So it, it is a kind of a cycle which will be moving on. So after then 4, we will replace it with 0. Then again, uh, we want 3. So here I am going to replace 3. So this is how all the replacements will be done. So I hope this, uh, you know, this algorithm is clear to you. Now next, let's move on to optimal page replacement. Now, this algorithm mainly replaces the page that will not be used for the longest time in the future. The practical implementation of this algorithm is actually not possible. Practical implementation is not possible because we cannot predict in advance uh, about those pages that will not be used for the longest time in future. So this algorithm leads to less number of page faults and thus it is the best known algorithm. Also, this algorithm can be used to measure the performance of other algorithms. So, let us talk about the advantage of this uh, OPR, that is Optimal Page Replacement. See, again, this algorithm is easy to use because you have to select just that page which is not uh, be used in the future, right? So, this algorithm actually provides ex excellent efficiency and it is less complex in comparison to other algorithms. And for the best result, the implementation of data structures is very easy. Next is, uh, what are the disadvantages that it has? So in this algorithm, future awareness of the program is needed. That is not practically possible maximum time. And secondly, the practical implementation is not possible because the operating system is unable to track the future request. Okay. So this is what optimal page replacement is. Means. You can see here, it is just used for comparison studies. Here you can see the example again. Again we have 7, I am loading it in the queue, then 0 and then 1, I have loaded it. Now, let's say I want to add 2. So I'll just pick up one uh, page that will no longer be needed. So I randomly picked seven and I replaced it with two, right? Then again, uh, I want to replace zero. So zero is already there. I have replaced zero from zero. And then I have want to replace three. So for three, what I'll do is I'll replace one by three. So as such, I'm doing it, you know, you know um, as and when I'm requiring. I, I have to make, a, you know, the... Um, I have to take a pre-session that which page has to be removed as you know, uh, I want to find out that which page will no longer be needed in the future. So this is one of uh, the you know, major disadvantage of OPR. Now let us see what is LRU. So LRU page replacement algorithm stands for least recent used. And this algorithm actually helps the operating system to search those pages that are used over a short duration of time. Frame. So the page table has not been used for the longest time in the main memory will be selected for the replacement. So this algorithm is actually, you know, it is easy to implement again. But this algorithm makes use of the counter along with the even page. So what is the advantage here? See, it is an efficient technique and with this algorithm, it becomes easy to identify the faulty page that are not needed for a long time and it helps in full analysis also. Then the disadvantages of this LRU is that it is you know, very expensive in nature and has uh, more complexity in comparison to other algorithms that we have seen previously. And there is a need of an additional data structure, a counter which will be needed to count, you know, the inability or the idle uh, behavior of any page. So again, you 
can see the example here. I hope this one is clear to all of you. Please replace that. Next category is LRU, which is approximation page replacement. So additional reference with algorithm it is. It is a second chance algorithm and enhanced second chance algorithm as well. It uses reference width, which is initially at zero. And after reference to a hardware, it updates to the web bit one. So we can use a bit byte as reference width history. At regular interval, we need to shift the reference width into the higher order bit of eight bit byte, shifting the other bits right by one bit and discarding the low order bit. Now, how additional reference bit algorithm? Example, if you have this page and it has not been uh, you know, used for eight time period. So what do we do? We use at least one in each time period. And it is more recently than this. Now, this is a second chance algorithm which uses FIFO as a reference bit and implement using a circular queue. So here we can refer it as a clock algorithm. There is a counting based page replacement algorithm which uses counters to count the number of references that have been made to each page. Where it will have two things the least frequently used and the most frequently used page. Then we have page buffering algorithms as well, which uses pool of frames. When a page fault occurs, a victim is chosen. But the page is read into a free frame from the pool before the victim is written out. So when a page fault occurs, we first check whether the desired page is in the free frame pool. And if it is not, we must select a free frame and read into it. <coughs> one algorithm which is called random page placement algorithm and how does it work see as the name suggests this algorithm randomly replaces any page okay so this algorithm you know may behave like other algorithm like FIFO, LIFO or LRU or optimal algorithm because it is not taking into account uh, a specific you know parameter to replace the victim page with a new page so this is just a randomness which is a factor used by this algorithm. So again, this can be used. Now let us move on to the objective questions. I hope lecture you have learned a lot about what is page replacement why page replacement is required and how we can you know implement this page replacement uh, using
using some of the algorithms how we can replace a page with a you know a frame so i hope this one is clear to you we have seen the algorithms how they implement what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of these algorithms. so now i'm quickly taking you over to the uh, mcq part of this uh, series let's see how you implement your learning on the current mcq Following page replacement algorithms suffers from validities and only. Let me even tell you this validities and only in page replacement algorithm. What exactly it is? The you know this validates anomaly is actually the name which is given to the phenomenon where increasing the number of page frames it results in an increase in the number of page words for a given memory access patterns. Right? So this is validates anomaly. So here you have a question related to validates anomaly. It has been asked that which algorithm suffers from this. So is it optimal replacement? Is it LRU, a FIFO, or both optimal replacement and FIFO? So I hope uh, it is clear to you. We have just seen here which algorithm suppose. Then there is a second question which says a process refers to five pages. This is an important question where you need to think uh, you know, rigorously. So the process has five pages A, B, C, D, E. In the order A, B, C, D, A, B, A, the order is given. Now, if the page replacement algorithm is FIFO, the first number of page transfers with an empty internal store of third frame is quickly think of this question logically and then answer. And then third question is, in question number two, if the number of page frame is increased to four, then the number of page transfers will increase, decrease, remains the same or none of the above mentioned. Quickly think of this. Try to answer quickly. So I hope you were able to answer these questions, these three questions. Now let me take you to the next set of questions. Question number four. A memory page containing a heavily used variable that was initialized very early and is in constant use is getting removed. Then the page replacement algorithm used is LRU, LFU, FIFO, or FIFO, or none of the above mentioned. And question number fifth says, a virtual memory system uses FIFO page replacement policy and it allocates a fixed number of frames to a process. Consider the following statements. Uh, increasing the number of page frame allocated to a process sometimes increases the page word rate. Or Q says some programs do not exhibit locality of reference. So which of the following is true? 
we have four options both p and q are true and p say both p and q are true but q is not the reason for p p is false but q is true both p and q are false if you try to answer I hope you have already answered these two questions, question number four and five. Let me take you to next set of questions, question number six, seven, and eight. Where question number six says, users dash that their process are running on a page system. They are aware, they are unaware, they may be unaware, and none of the other mentioned. Question number seven says, if there are no frame, no frames are free, then page transfer is or are required. How many page transfer are required? And finally, when a page is selected for replacement and its modified bit is set, then the page is clean, the page has been modified, the page is dirty, the page has been modified since it was read in from the disk and page is dirty. have answered the questions correctly. Now let me take you to the next set of questions. Question number 9 and 10. The aim of creating page replacement algorithms is to replace the page faster, increase the page fault rate, decrease the page fault rate, or to allocate multiple pages to processes. And the 10th question says, a FIFO replacement algorithm associates with each page the time it was brought into the memory, the size of the page in the memory, the page after and before it, and finally, all of the above mentioned. So quickly try to answer. So with this, I hope you are able to answer all these questions correctly as you have already seen what exactly uh, the questions were asking to you. So uh, in today's lecture, we have seen what is page replacement, what is the technique, and why do we need to have algorithms for page replacement. And according to that, we have seen some of the page replacement algorithms as well. We 
have learned about three to four uh, important page replacement algorithm. I hope you have learned well in this lecture and uh, you can write down the comments or the questions you have in the comment section of uh, this box. And in case if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all these questions and, and the queries of yours. So stay tuned with me. Keep on learning as I'm going to come up with some more interesting lectures on operating system. Thank you so much.